Okay, it's Scott Hamilton with Rockfile Radio backstage at the Kelsey Theater in Lake Park, Florida with my good buddy Marius. How are you doing? I'm kind of sick, but I feel great because we returned to America with a wasteland tour. It's it's so so great. We have been waiting. I've been waiting for years for you to come back to my stomping ground so I'd make this easy. We've talked on Skype, we've talked on the yeah. phone, and here we are in person, which is absolutely wonderful. Um, so tell me, you've been touring with the album for a while. How's it going? Fantastic. I mean, America, so I should say absolutely fantastic. No, but seriously, uh, it's one of our best tours, maybe because of the fact that we are not in grief anymore. We started a new chapter, and we are in the, with the new lineup, we feel really, really great. And so, uh, yeah, basically, it's, it's, it's going so far. This is one of our best tours. Maybe also because we finally uh, prepared... A normal proper set list you know <laughs> with with some songs that you can sing together and, and and entertain with the band with the audience so it's it's pretty amazing because you have enough of a catalog now that you can kind of pick the, the 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 crowd response songs like that's very true yeah so you kicked off last night in atlanta it was an intimate little show and this is kind of preparing for ross fest tomorrow night right are you looking forward to being in front of like prog hungry fans yeah, you know this prog thing. It's just like always the buzz in my head because I'm, I'm kind of uh, I don't want to you know wave the flag with right. the name prog. I just think that prog these days it's pretty uh, unprogressive music. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to be let's say more alter alternative uh, in sort of way. I do hope that wasteland sounds like uh, we try to push some boundaries and everything. Of course. From the wider perspective, it's kind of pro progressive. So, I, I I would love to have that kind of stuff, but I'm not kind of into prog in this, let's say. Uh, Just because it's named prog. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I'm trying to fight with that in sort of way. But I know that th we have a prog community. People love us. People who listen to that kind of music. So I can't say like like I'm denying this. This is something wrong. No, it's not. <laughs> But uh, we uh, changed a bit and we prepared our, uh, as I said before, set list our songs for a uh, not strict uh, prog audience, just for everybody, you know? Mm -hmm. So we, we also want to be that kind of band. So, but anyway, I'm, I'm happy that we can return to these strict to prog uh, venues because uh, that's a challenge for us, you know, yeah. to, to convince people with a different kind of music than just playing only, you know, Second Life Syndrome song, you know what I mean. Well, for me, when I started Rockfile Radio, the first station, I called it Prog Rock because I wasn't trying to make a prog station either. My definition of prog these days is music that is maybe too complicated for mainstream radio. Mainstream radio has a certain sound, whether it's Five Finger, Death Punch, or Godsmack, or Disturbed, or whatever. But it's a certain, you know, and, and things that have too many chords, things that have too many changes, too many weird things, too long. There's, there's so many... This doesn't fit that format. Exactly. So I use a very broad term of prog because you guys, to me, are a great rock band. It, I described somebody last night. They were asking me, what does Riverside sound like? I said, I don't know if the guys in Pink Floyd were actually Polish and got together in the 21st century and decided they wanted to make something interesting. It would kind of sound like this. There's, you know, there's some metal in there. There's some ethereal acoustic stuff in there. there you know, Riverside, we were talking about the name up here. Riverside conjures up a certain image now. In the beginning, I was like, that's the name of a town, that's the name of whatever. But now I get this, I don't know, I kind of see the Wasteland video when I hear your name. Did you have that kind of idea when you named the band? No, we had uh, the river, you know, right. in our minds when we uh, started to think about the name of the band. Because it flows, it changes. And uh, that's what's going on with our music, I think. But anyway, I, I, I just still believe that... Uh, at the very beginning, I remember that I called Riverside just sadness, whisper, scream, and joy. Everything is fine beside joy, probably, but uh, <laughs> that's our joy is on the love here, the time machine. You know, our jo the most joyful album. So for many people, it's the, the saddest music that they've ever listened to. But anyway, <laughs> but I, I just think that um, Riverside um, uh, found our star, it, its style, um, actually. We, we found it maybe at the very beginning, but we always had a problem with, uh, you know, being labeled by uh, people as 
uh, Polish version of uh, okay, some other right, bands, right. right? We've been Porcupine Tree, we've been uh, Dream Theater after the tour, which is bizarre for me, but... Because yeah, you don't really sound like those bands. I, I, I know lots of people just think that we are sort of like Dream Theater band because we've been touring together, but it's not true. Right. Guys, this is not true. We not sound like Dream Theater. <laughs> but anyway, uh, after songs, uh, some other people started to just talk that we are just Polish Deep Purple because of Hammond organ. <laughs> Jesus Christ! But <laughs> but I but I think that on Wasteland we proved that we found something and uh, we marked this on this album because mm -hmm. we always had something unique. But on Wasteland it's really hard to say that this is I don't know Porcupine Tree or something uh, or um, you know all these bands that they just they were always people love to compare right. uh, Riverside to to these bands. No, not anymore. And uh, at the same time, I think that there's, there's another chance for us. But for me personally, I'm, I think that I'm, I found myself somewhere in this, uh, mm, I've got some kind of musical area by myself, you know, and both in Lunatic Soul and in Riverside, I try to extend. And then in Riverside, um, it's, it's more, you know, rockish approach. This is the rock band with everything. In Lunatic Soul, I can do everything. But I'm, I think I'm in between a hard heavy stuff some metal stuff uh electronic stuff mm -hmm. uh oriental uh you know folkish uh, something approach and just normal you know pop songs mm -hmm. and uh, and and everything that happens it's just the balance between all these four seasons if i can say that i like that i like that analogy i got to tell you everybody was worried about the band continuing on when you lose a band member it's a it's a horrible thing and you guys are more than that you were a family but wasteland is you guys came back on a it's a whole nother level i mean you're right you have made a statement with this album that you're not only back but you're here and you're a new thing and you're and you're moving forward are you already thinking about what next music is coming from you guys I think that will be uh, what we started on Wasteland. We, we are going to improve, that's for sure. Of course, I, I don't want to repeat myself, and I always try to find a story behind the new album. So, but it, if we had uh, the desert uh, on the Wasteland, now we should start to build the cities, you know, and it should be something about. Uh, um, we on the wasteland we we're just uh, wondering how to survive. Now we know that we can survive, and now we need to live, right? Mm -hmm. Live on. So definitely, it will be something like wasteland improvement, <laughs> <laughs> evolution, evolution for the band. Yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what are you playing video game wise right now? <laughs> Sekiro. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to beat the boss, uh, the, the big big monkey. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> I, I gave up. You know, we we we, we <laughs> together with Mateusz, our light guy, mm -hmm. uh, we bought this game uh, on the European tour, and we we were just it, we were in sh we've been in shock because we, as a huge Dark Souls fan, we couldn't you know fight with the first boss. You know, it was so weird. But now I think I kind of got it after a few hours of of fighting. So you like these brutally hard games that can kill you. <laughs> <sighs> You know, it's kind of frustrated. I, I gave up a bit, but I returned when I got home. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I love challenges, but uh, I think this is a bit too much. Uh, I think I, I will return to Red Dead Redemption. But uh, anyway, I'm <laughs> for, for, for once in a while, I'm trying to go back to From Software Games. Yeah? Yeah. So what about Lunatic Soul? You have some ideas for another uh, project there? Yes. I'm thinking of the next album, definitely. I've mentioned about this... Uh, electronic heavy stuff uh, pop stuff and a folkish stuff so this time lunatic soul will go into a uh, dark folk uh, <laughs> direction because i think that i should return a bit to to the mood that we've got on the black and i, I have i've got on the black and white album it's sort of the continuation of this uh i need a transition album between uh, death and life Maybe you've seen that. I just put this diagram with uh, all Lunatic Soul albums. And uh, actually, it will be like album number three now in the row, <laughs> in the whole concept. Right. And, and basically, album number seven. Yeah, I'm thinking of that. It's, it's really rough and hard to, to do that because we, we have lots of shows with Riverside right now. That's, uh, so, but I, I'm, I have this ambitious plan to, to f you know, fill the gaps and just find something in between. 
So this new chapter of Riverside, how's the response been? You said the tour has been great. I had a friend of mine in Scotland describe it as immense, which is a wonderful thing. Um, the couple videos that like the record label put up the live version of Wasteland, which I thought was brilliant. Um, does this feel like you are next level? Because it does to us. I'm not sure if it's next level. For sure, it's another chance for us. You know, we became a different band right now uh, with a heritage, of course. But mm-hmm. uh, we decided to simply uh, find the new language. And I hope, I, I've noticed that people people uh, accepted that really much and they are very into this. And I hope they will in the future. <laughs> and uh, so for us, it's, it's like another chance. We always had this... Uh, um, it was kind of balanced, you know, because uh, mm, after the success of Second Life Syndrome, uh, we had this economical crisis, and our label had a problem with a um, mother label. And uh, the Rapid Eye Movement and Anna Domini High Definition, they were practically without any promotion. Uh, Shrine of New Generation Slaves was like another shot for us, and Love for the Time Machine. So we started to, you know, build the our our l- name again right. but with the death of Piotr suddenly you know everything was broke down again but with Wasteland we have like the third uh, <laughs> chance and uh, so far it's 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 pretty great I think that m- maybe I have to mention that because um, when we lost Piotr and when we had this uh, not uh, great time lots of people realized what what we're singing about you know about what what's what's the story behind riverside all these lyrics started to f- fit to to all these emotional days mm-hmm. and i think that it sort of convinced them to to our music and uh, people started to look at our music from a different perspective maybe that's why lots of people finally uh trust us or believed us <laughs> you know that okay that's that's a different kind of band that i thought they are and um i i, I We've noticed that. We've noticed that change. And we also have noticed that uh, there's lots of people, because I was afraid that after death of Piotr, lots of people would say, okay, this is not my band anymore. But that's true. They, no. We've got much more people because they, they, they want us to, to carry on. So that's that's really beautiful. And I, I would love to thank you from this place to everybody uh, for, for such a huge amount of support that, we, that we've got. We're so glad. To, we, like I said, we were very thankful that you guys didn't go away. No, I'm, actually, I'm grateful too. So, um, what do you plan to do while you're here in the states? I'm sure you have some off days. Is there anything you want to see? Have you seen the new Avengers movie? I mean, what's going on? <laughs> I've seen before before the trip. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, so. <laughs> he hasn't seen it yet, so we're not doing any spoilers tonight. So he doesn't know that. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm. You know. <laughs> How did you enjoy it? I enjoy that very much. You yeah, know. No, that that's good. a that's a different level. You know. I think that's those. Lo- those two Avengers, you know, the, the, this one and the, the, the one before, it 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 showed that uh, these superheroes are really connected with, uh, you know, human emotions. So yeah. which we, it's not flat anymore, <laughs> maybe. But anyway, um, well, you've we, talked you've talked about before that video games have kind of worked their way into some of your songwriting. Do movies also work their way in? Of course, you know, I always try to find something deep, you know, uh, that I. I know that for many people it would be nice if I, for instance, if I'd be inspired only by Ingmar Bergman movies. <laughs> uh, but I, it just is just like Riverside music. I, I prefer to find a balance between something which is something ambitious and uh, that people can simply understand. You know, uh, I'm the Zodiac Libra, so I always try to find a good balance. And the same, I, I adore uh, all these uh, movies uh, shooted by directors. You know those artistic directors if I can say and the same like blockbusters I'm enjoying this very much the same is with the music you know I, I, I adore weird ambient shit if I can say that word and and uh, and uh, something you know like normal songs right from 80s so it's it's, it's perfect for me and um, the same is with video games for many people it sounds like it's something flat for the inspirations or shallow but for me not at all. I can find something interesting, especially if it, if it comes to, uh, I don't know, some Japanese horror games. <laughs> so, I really adore this uh, atmosphere and mood, and it helped me to create my own dark music. <laughs> so see, there you go. We learned something new today. 
Yeah, and and this is funny because I've noticed that I'm probably only one who's just admitted that uh, out loud, and you also <laughs> admitted out loud that you're just you know the games, uh, the blockbusters, movies, and the video games are equal as some other artistic you know things. So but this is the life we live in. So I, I, I'm okay with that, definitely. I was gonna say I found myself in in my adult career is gravitating towards things that are art, things that make me feel things, whether it's good, bad, and different. Uh, I found beautiful things in some sad stuff. I've and I've laughed my butt off, you know, and I'm I'm energized by rock shows. I, I don't know. I just like hanging out with art. It's all art to me, and even if it's popular, uh, pop culture is a big thing now. Nostalgia is a thing now. I don't know how it is in the rest of the world, but here in America, nostalgia. All our radio stations are going that way. Everywhere you go, you just hear '80s and '90s music. It, 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 as an artist, is that in your mind the, to to fight that? I totally agree. You know, it's just like for me, the biggest challenge is to create something that can be. Uh, you know, both all these uh, weird critics can be excited about, and normal people who just listen to—I don't if I can say that—normal music, you know. <laughs> and uh, of course, I'm not trying to push the boundaries. I, 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 I still want to have it in this, um, you know, do something in this artistic way. Artistic means for me that something there is something that matters and and has uh, la layers. You know, there is some, something deep. Uh, beneath, beyond, and, um, and yeah, that that's something that I really like. And I think that this is a huge challenge, for instance, to create uh, the really good movie that you can be in the theater for three hours and it clicks like that, you know. And you escape. You don't think about anything else, and, and they the tell same, you a story. Exactly. And the same is with the music. There are some albums like they do, they have. There are like I don't know, fifty or sixty or seventy minutes, and goes like this. And there are like thirty-five pieces of music that you listen to this, and it's just, and you're just checking the your watch all the time <laughs> because it's so artistically brave and amazing, and all these critics from Pitchfork just saying that this is the best album of the year, but it's. It's unlistenable you know it's or it just doesn't connect with you it, it, that's true yeah. so uh, the same is with, with some movies you know but um, yeah yeah there's been movies that have gotten great reviews that didn't connect with me and there's some that got 20% on Rotten Tomatoes that I have in my collection that I love it's just you know <laughs> there's probably some pretty bad bands I like too but that's what it's all about well thank you so much for taking the time I know you're on a schedule this is only the second date of the tour but man it's so good to see you in person again and talk to you uh, you want to say anything else to everybody I didn't answer your question, well, oh. <laughs> uh, because you, you just asked me uh, if I want to see something on this tour. I definitely want to see something and experience something new because this is our the biggest tour uh, in U.S. Uh, so far, and uh, I'm kind of happy that uh, I already experienced something new. I love bugs. <laughs> uh, Welcome to Florida. <laughs> uh, on the Florida, if you should see the, the the front of our nightliner when we just came here, it was I, I took lots of pictures. Uh, but I also read about love bugs, and it's kind of interesting, you know. These guys are together until the end of their days. It's sort of. I, I, I hear a song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's pretty romantic, if I can say that. So. Hey, I'm happy. That's that's a new experience for me, definitely. Okay. Well, I'm sure you'll have some others on your tra travels around the country. How long does this tour go for? Uh, I, it, I don't know. It's just like we've gone, we have like 24 shows, so 22 left, 23, including this one. Catch Riverside on tour. Visit their website. Buy the tickets. Come see them. Come buy the merch and support this band. We're so happy they're back. Marius, thank you. Thank you so much.